Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Caveman Aston, and today I'm planning to finish off this project at long last. It's been in a couple of different episodes. Um, so it is a camera adapter, so it's going to go on my tripod. One end, like this end for example, is going to sit on the tripod. Uh, I've already machined in um, a quick release adapter, so it should fit my existing tripod. Um, it's also got a standard thread adapter, so I can put in different uh, quick release adapters uh, to change it between different tripods that have different mounts. And we have another one of these at the other end uh, with a, another quick release mount, probably this half of it. Uh, Going to sit on something very similar. Uh, so this itself undoes a little bit, can slide it up and down, pinch it up tight, and it's locked nice and firm. So that, set my tripod at the other end, gonna have another block of that up the other way. This will mount on the top as a quick release adapter. This can rotate. Um, camera's gonna sit in here, and this means that the tripod will be sat over here, the like machine, so be it the lathe, the mill, anything else that I happen to be working on can sit under this section here, and the camera can actually sit up really nice and close to where I'm working to get some nice, decent uh, video. Uh, so basically, I'm going to be copying this, uh, making some subtle adjustments to it that I've sort of decided upon uh, as I've worked on this first prototype. I may go back and remachine this at a later date, but that will be a, a little odd video. So plan is get this all finished and put away for good, and I can start using it. Uh, so first things first, I've got my bar of metal that needs to be cut down to size. I've got a brand new toy. I haven't used it yet, so this is going to be its first outing. I'm going to have to read through the instructions. Wish me luck. Once I've got it cut to size, over to the mill and start cutting shapes. Um, thank you very much for some of the people that have left me comments and given me some suggestions on how to use various cutters. Um, some really, really useful information. Um, I'll look his name up. Um, turning point, I believe it is. Um, giving me some really useful information on how to use a dovetail cutter a bit better. So hopefully I won't break another one this, this time. And uh, let's get cutting! Okay, so that was the first time using it and I can say I'm thoroughly impressed. Oh. See how close we can get there. So that, super nice even cut. That, I can only assume I probably actually cleaned up, but I've done some previous cuts with an angle grinder, and oh, it was it was everywhere. So if you have the space for it, I can thoroughly recommend getting yourself a bandsaw. All right, onto the mill, let's get it all squared up, and um, whatever comes after that, <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Okay, I've taken a file around all the edges on this, so I'll just break any of the uh, burrs that are built up from mostly from the amp grinder. But it was a little one from the bandsaw. Uh, I put a parallel just in the bottom of the vise, just to lift it up just a fraction, so it sits over the top, so I can get a nice clean cut without cutting the uh, the top of the uh, vise jaws. Um, got a question for anybody who's uh, able to help. I find with this, uh, I think it's about 63mm uh, cutter, depending on which direction I go, if I go from left to right or right to left, the the leading edge takes a cut and then the second edge doesn't in one direction. But I find in the other direction, a leading edge will take a cut, but the trailing edge will take like a second, ever so slightly deeper cut. I spent a long time trying to get the um, the head angled correctly, and I thought it was all correct. Um, any suggestions on a, a logical way to go about that? Um, other than what I've been doing would be great, um, but I'm just going to keep it going in one direction each time to make sure it's consistent. Um, so I'm going to go around, square off one edge, then square off a second edge so it gives me two reference edges, do the rest, and then take the sort of the long edge, so then I'll put it like that, and like that, square it up that way, and uh, take that to dimensions, that's the only real dimension that's uh, particularly changing. Alright, let's get cracking! Ok, 
Okay guys, I uh, loosened up the head and uh, adjusted it slightly. It was sort of like a quarter of a turn or something silly. I just needed to make on a little lock nut up around the back up there, uh, which is where the, uh, there's like a, there's a little lock nut up on the side, just up here, um, which prevents the head from moving beyond 90 degrees. So it's not like a little set stop. So I just had to adjust that a little bit. It was probably about less than a quarter of a turn and I've just run it back across one more pass and uh, it was good as gold. So I don't know if you might have noticed on the clip just now, but there was just a fraction of cut back on this side from this trailing edge on the cutter. Um, but that's all done now, so I'm happy. It was just me being lazy in the first place. Alright, so I'm going to take out the parallel in here and put two half decent sized parallels in because it's going to need to lift this up high enough so that I can actually. That should probably do. Uh, these parallels are probably a tad on the large size, but the next size down, I think, from the previous iteration of making this. Uh, it didn't fit, it didn't clear the top, so unfortunately I'm stuck with using the slightly larger ones and I don't know if you noticed I've got a little hammer that I used on the previous, so this hammer, um, I didn't realise quite how much difference it made, so I was just pinching up the door with my fingers and just as I'm tapping it I was surprised that just a, the few little bits of turn that I could feel, so it clearly makes a difference, which is possibly why some of my parts weren't coming out particularly square. So hopefully a little hammer's going to come in handy. I might get around to making one myself, a proper machinist one, but this came with a rack that I put up in the corner of the garage, which I thought was quite handy. Alright, on with the next pass. For anybody wondering, this is just a bit of a welding rod that I've got, so probably not the best because it's going to be steel inside. But it has got a copper outer coating, uh, mainly because I've not got any soft copper bar to put in. But I'm just using it as a, a round surface to uh, help the alignment when I haven't actually machined up all of the edges yet. So there's a couple of people on YouTube who uh, give a far better explanation of that than me. Uh, I believe I picked it up from Blondie Hacks, uh, Quinn I believe her name is, uh, who makes some thoroughly good videos. So that's now two edges machined. So what I want to do here is I just want to, first of all I'm going to round off the uh, edges a little bit, take any burrs off. What I want to do is I want to take a square over just to check that I'm actually taking square cuts. Not so because this project needs it, but because in the future I imagine I'm going to end up wanting to do something that's going to require some actual accurate cutting rather than just generally in a square shape. But now's the best time to practice, so I'm just going to grab the square and um, what I do is hold it up to the light and see how much, if any, of a gap I can spot through. And it looks pretty close. Uh, so I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that. So there I got a little bit of wobble just there. So over on the far left you can see it, it opens up a bit of a gap, so I think this edge isn't actually being cut quite flat. There's a bit of a gap here. So I'm not entirely sure why that is, I imagine it's um, oh, when I've hammered it down, I did notice on this last run, um, as I was tapping it down there was a bit of wobble. 
Um, I did leave it because I thought it's not that important, but it is something to for me to note going forwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this back in, and I'm just going to uh, take down these edges because that is close enough to square uh, that it should be fine. So I'll take down that edge, flip it over, take down the other edge. Because these have all been machined already, this is my fixed reference, so hopefully all should be good. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to stick the ruler across the two corners, or all four corners eventually, scribing a line on both sides of it to take account for the thickness of the ruler, doing the same from the other two corners, and hopefully you should be able to see that on screen, but there's now effectively a small diamond pattern in the middle, really small, so that's exactly where I need to stick the centre hole. Then for the two side bits, uh, I've already decided based on the previous one that I've made, I want it exactly 5mm in from the edge rather than central. Uh, it'll give me a little bit of clearance on the edges uh, without the bolt being too big because it's already a 6mm bolt. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scribe the lines gently in the, in the Sharpie. And then what I'm going to do on the whip just to make sure I've halved it correctly, I'm going to describe from both sides. So that will take into account any slight error there might be, and I can go in between the two lines. So the next step is to tap the holes or to do the dovetail cutting. Um, I thought I'd take it out of the vise because either way it's going to have to come out. I thought I'd do the taps before I forget them and then I can go back and do the dovetail afterwards. Also the dovetail isn't essential uh, because potentially I could make it work with the previous mount I made and this one without the dovetails. Uh, so I'm going to do the taps, I'm going to start with the central one because it's the quarter end twen quarter quarter inch 20 TPI uh, thread for the tripod adapter and then the outside two are just standard M6 um, not to say the imperial one's not standard but it's imperial um, so I'm going to do those in that order uh, then I'll stick it back in the mill and start doing the dovetails Okay, hopefully that's coming out on screen okay, but what I've done is as the uh, threaded hole is obviously it's got its own diameter, I've gone 
and scraped across with this scribe inside the hole. I uh, pushed it right against the furthest back surface and then at the furthest center surface which has given me the two lines. So right in the middle of that should be exactly where I need to uh, put the punch to drill the hole. Now I've just done a central line right through the middle. So just to explain, I've uh, put this in right against the top edge and put it right in against the bottom edge as I've gone across like that. Okay, I've made a mistake here. I countersunk the first hole and when I marked up the next hole I put the marker pen on the underside and then because I marked it and put a centre punch in um, it's all on the wrong side so I've already drilled it through on the final full size which means I've now had to take it out, flip it over uh, to do the countersink and then I'm going to have to mill out a slot. What I really should have done is I should have flipped it over probably after the first very small hole which then means I could have roughly lined it back up and then any of the rest of the holes would have been straight through which means the final countersunk would have lined up but it's it's pretty close, I put the 6mm back in got it lined up, just moving it back up and down um, making sure it didn't catch so I'm going to countersink it and then mill the slot ok so I finished it and I've managed to misalign that by quite a bit uh, so I'll line it up. I don't know how well that will come across on camera, but the slot is um, quite a way off. So I've milled it out slightly wider. Um, it does just about fit. Uh, just so that I can actually use this camera rig, I'm going to finish it off, uh, and then I'll make a new one uh, once it's all done. Uh, so the next step is to make the brass knob that goes in the top there. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to use my new knurling tool hopefully and um, I'm going to knurl it before I part it off so hopefully that will uh, give me a better finished, res finished result. On to the lathe. Okay, so here it is, both of them on the, the rig, um, and pretty much all finished. Obviously I still need to make the new plate, but my plan is I will use this, now it's finished, to record a real quick time lapse of me doing it. So this is the new one, so obviously it's all the same, that screws up, and when it gets low enough, that is loose and allows it to slide, but won't come out. Uh, undo it a bit more, that comes out, the whole bar can pop off. Um, then on the underside here, I've cut all of the dovetails around. And here I've got a uh, Arca Swiss tripod head that comes with a quick release plate. So I can use this. Stick that in there. And do it up. And it's nice and tight. And then slide it out, rotate it 90 degrees and slide it in and it's nice and tight. So that one obviously the reason I part the reason I ended up making a second um, or some of the changes that I decided to do for the second were purely because of that, that fitment. So here I believe it fits on the long direction. So I do it up all the way and it's still loose on that if I stick it in this way, just about tightens enough to hold it. So there, that, that just about holds it. I'll 
fairly tight, but it's right as tight as it will go. So that I'm happy with. Both of them have got a hole in the center to allow a tripod uh, quick release plate to be screwed into it. So they're pretty universal. I could put them on different tripod heads with different adapters. Um, some of the changes that I made on this newer one is I think I cut the block. Oh no, the block isn't actually, or it's a fraction longer at the top there, so maybe 5mm. Um, what I've done is I spent a little bit more time measuring the holes. So the holes are right on the edge there, and the same on this side. So what that means is that when this rotates, there's a lot more clearance. So here I can just drop that in, falls in the gap nice and easy. It doesn't get caught on the brass knob or the back end of this. Still slides. But this one, if I spin that round, even with this uh, sort of semicircle that I've crudely made, and the brass knob there, if I try and put it in straight or pull it out straight, straight up it gets caught on the brass knob. And if this is in the right position, that's currently sort of does something like there. It's just a little bit stuck on the back edge of this because the holes are slightly more central rather than right at the edge. But it all fits, so I'm going to uh, knock it up on the tripod, put the camera on, get a quick shot on the GoPro of it. Um, that's all done. I'll use this, make a quick time lapse of me making a new top plate here. Um, otherwise, I think I might just take the uh, the corners off. They're still a little bit sharp. Alright, well, thank you very much, everybody, for watching my tripod adapter. Still need to get the shot, but I'll do that now. Add it in before you see this bit of video, so you'll be none the wiser. So, um, Thank you very much everybody for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. I realised I probably said at the beginning of this video that I would try a slightly different approach to the video. Halfway through I probably forgot, so we'll see what I can do in the editing. Um, let me know what you think. Um, hopefully it won't be too long, this has been a, over the course of probably almost a month I've been making this on and off, so I apologise if it's a bit confusing timeline wise. Um, so, if you have enjoyed the video, please do hit that subscribe button down there. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Leave comments, ask questions, and just to answer anybody who might be wondering, yes, I did break another dovetail cutter. Um, anybody's got suggestions on what I'm doing wrong, might be doing wrong. It's a lot of vibration. Don't know. Um, any suggestions would be great. Um, I have ordered myself, and it's arrived, a DRO to go on the milling machine here, so at some point I'll be doing a video of that, but otherwise I'm not sure what's up next, but uh, I'll catch you in the next video.